All right, we'll go ahead and um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Matthew Dufresne. I'm an account manager here at Law Ruler. I help law firms across the country increase their conversion rates and just take better control over their intake process to help increase revenue and growth uh, month after month. I'm joined here with our marketing manager, Nicholas Apollo. We're excited to give you guys a good webinar today with a lot of useful information. Today, we're going to be diving into how to use marketing automation to drive new business in 2022. I know it's still January, so I want to wish everybody here that's joining us today a happy new year. I hope the new year has started off with great success so far for everybody. And I'm excited to dive into our material today and get everybody started. All right. So let's go ahead and let's dive on in. So what I want to do to get everything kicked off is I just want to start a quick poll. And one of the polls I want to ask everybody uh, is, did your firm have leads fall through the cracks in 2021? So I'd really like to hear from you guys. I want to hear if this has been a major issue for you. I know a lot of the firms that I deal with on a daily basis, this is the main pain point for them. They've got a lot of leads that fall through the cracks. And even though they do a lot to prevent it, there's still some things that, that we can do a little bit better to prevent it. But a lot of firms have that concern. And that's one of the ways that a lot of firms that would really do a lot with marketing automation to fuel growth. Awesome. That was very fast. It looks like everybody's results are back in. I appreciate everybody that answered that. It looks like an overwhelming yes. There's a few that answered no, in which case that's great. I'm glad you guys haven't had many fall through the cracks. Um, hopefully you're using Law Ruler to help out with that process and we've been able to uh, reduce that as much as possible for you. For those of you who have had leads fall through the cracks, this meeting today is really going to be about how to prevent that with using marketing automation, how we can take those leads and really do our best job using automation to convert them and use that extra revenue to really fuel our growth in 2022. All right, so let's go ahead and let's dive in. What we're gonna be talking about today in regards to that is we're gonna be talking about the different parts of the client's journey where marketing automation can come in handy and where you can really use that automation to fuel your growth, to convert more clients, get more business. And there's a few ways you might not have thought of that we're gonna go over today. Because when a lot of people think about automation, they really think of new client automation. They think of how do I use automation just to engage these people that are filling out webinar, filling out um, web surveys, filling out web forms, giving phone calls, how do I reach these people? That's what's mostly focused on when you're talking about automation. However, there's a big opportunity in other parts of the client's journey as well, such as existing clients and capturing clients uh, at, their, at the close of the case as well. So there's a lot that you can do to also fuel growth during those steps of the journey. So let's discuss, to start with, the first part of the client's journey, which is becoming a new client. So with new clients that are filling out website web forms when they're calling in, a lot of times what will happen with firms that don't have anything in place is they will go to an email inbox or they'll go to a phone call and then the firm is busy, it'll go to a voicemail. The problem with this is in this day and age, everyone is expecting instant gratification. And the problem with that is when we have tools like Google as a consumer, everybody is doing is going through the Google draft. And what that means is I'm searching for attorneys near me. If I was in a car accident, for example, I'm Googling car accident attorneys near me. And what I'm doing is I'm calling everybody down that list. I'm starting at the top, and I'm working my way down. If I call the first person, they don't answer, they don't text me, they don't email me. I'm going down that list until somebody does because I want that instant gratification because I'm on a mission and I want to be heard. I want, I want somebody to help me and make me feel valued because I'm going through a stressful time. You know, anytime somebody's reaching out to an attorney, it's normally a stressful time for them. So what marketing automation can really do here is when a web lead comes in, Law Ruler will automatically sync up with their marketing source. So your lead will automatically get created in the system. It will attribute that marketing source to them. And it will, what you can do then is you can trigger automations based off of where they came from. So as soon as that person fills out that web form, they will get an email and a text message 
that is custom tailored by the firm using our platform. And here's what that does. That stops that process of the person continuing down that list and Googling. And it's all based on how you word that information and what you include in your follow-up. A lot of other softwares out there and a lot of firms out there right now, if they are using automation, it's just email. There's a huge problem with that. There's a huge opportunity. Think about your own email inbox for a second. Your own email inbox, how many unread emails do you have? How many emails go to spam that you don't even pay attention to until once a week? You miss out a lot because we're so used to getting spammed by businesses left and right through our emails. We're desensitized to the point where we just don't check them that often. We'll acknowledge that something came in. We'll look at our phones because we'll see the we'll see the notification, but we won't check it. Versus how many unread texts do you have? Probably not a lot. Most people have maybe one, two unread texts. And even if they didn't read or open the text, they looked at their phone notification and they looked at the preview. So they know who texted them. Sending that text automation is extremely important when fueling your growth using marketing automation. That texting capability is what allows you to get in front of more clients because with the email, it could be lost. Text messages, those don't really get lost. Now, taking that to the next step, now that you know that you're, that's important to use that text message, is what do you include in that text message to fuel that growth, to gain that interest, and to convert that client a lot easier? And the real advice that I can give to people with that, because I see a lot of attorneys that make this mistake, is a lot of attorneys will get very technical or they'll get too generic. I'm sure everybody here has subscribed to a text message thread in their lifetime where they'll get texts from businesses and they'll say, you know, hi, thank you for contacting us. We will be with you momentarily. Nobody wants to get a text from a robot. You know, it completely turns you off of the company that you're on. Like, oh, well, this, uh, I'm just another number to them. They don't care about me. They didn't take the time to personally text me. People that are reaching out to an attorney want to feel valued. They want to feel like, okay, this attorney is paying attention to me. You can use our marketing automation tool to gain that customer's confidence. And you do that by getting specific, which we allow you to do. You can take our automation and boil it down to where they came from, what case type they're reaching out to you, if you have case type specific, marketing outreach. And you can make it look like an actual person reached out to them with our mail merge codes. So instead of just saying, thank you for contacting us, we'll be with you momentarily. You could say, hi, Nick, this is Matthew from Law Ruler. Thank you so much for filling out our Facebook form. I really appreciate your time. I'm reviewing your information that you submitted. I'm going to reach out to you momentarily from this number. That endpoint is huge and you see how that's just building is such a better customer connection. It looks like an actual person reached out to them and they're getting that feeling of confidence. So it allows them to actually wanna answer that phone. And the important part is that last sentence, I am going to be calling you from this number. How many times have you tried to just call a client that submitted a web form only for them not to pick up? Chances are they're not picking up because they don't recognize that number. They're like, ah, this is another spam call. It's either a toll-free number. I'm not answering that. Or it's a, it'll go to voicemail. If it's important enough, they'll leave a voicemail and I'll call back when I can. That's terrible because it's taking up that intake rep's time. Or if you're in a solo practice, that's taking your time to call this person out and they're not answering. And then you have to wait for a call back and you might be busy missing that opportunity. With that last sentence, you tell them what number you're going to be calling them from before you call them, it will increase your answer rates and increase your conversion exponentially. It is a huge component in getting more clients converted. Now, this is just one way that the marketing automation can be used when it comes to new clients. The other side of marketing automation with new clients is different follow-up cadences. You can set follow-up cadences in case you know somebody calls and they say, oh, now it's not a great time to talk. You can even do things like sending out intakes. There's a lot more that you can do with that to where you can engage the client and prevent them from going down the list and building more confidence in your brand. Because that's ultimately what marketing automation is for when reaching out to new clients and marketing is you're building a brand around your business. This, these days, marketing has gotten so advanced that everybody needs a brand in order for them to feel confident in doing business with you. Like, I don't wanna just go to any attorney. I wanna go to the attorney that's made me feel like the most valued. I don't wanna go to this big guy who sent me a robotic text. So that's pretty much what I have to say about the new client sector. 
and how to use marketing automation to fuel your growth with the new clients is by using our, our software to get more specific, get more customized, and really add value to your customers' lives with each and every outreach and get more conversions. So now that we've discussed a little bit about new clients, let's dive into a less talked about sector of the client's journey that's also important in marketing automation and which separates larger firms from the smaller firms because they already know to do this. And what that is, is it's marketing to existing clients. We pay for all of our leads that come through in one way or another. Leads are expensive. Nobody, nobody is getting leads for cheap these days, especially after COVID. Prices of lead generation has just gone through the roof. So we need to capitalize from every avenue that we could possibly get and make sure that we do as much as possible to reach out to as many people as possible to fuel business and fuel growth. And a large part of that that people don't think about is their existing clients. Their existing clients are a huge database of contacts because it's not just those clients. It's who those clients know. Who can, what friends do they have? Every, every person has a, has a good amount of friends, at least one or two friend groups, family members, people that they know that might be in similar situations that if they're getting world-class customer service from your firm, they're going to be more than happy to send you referral business. At the end of the day, you just have to ask. And a lot of firms, they get nervous about asking. They don't, they're uncomfortable or they just don't have the time because it's such a manual process for them still. Law Ruler can use the marketing automation to send client outreach and marketing campaigns to existing clients based on criteria that you set. So let's talk about that. Let's dive into that. So let's take Mass Torts, for example. You might have signed up a bunch of people for a Mass Tort, such as tal Talcum Powder. When you filled out that intake, a lot of people answered that survey or answered the intake questions a certain way. And there might have been you know, a way they answer those questions that qualify them for another mass tort that you're just starting out. You can use Law Ruler to look through every single one of your existing clients, find out who answered that question a certain way through custom reports, and then you can target those people with marketing automation, who they are, you can identify who they are, then you can target them with marketing automation to ask them to sign up for the new tort that you guys are releasing. Or if you're building a new case type. So you're able to really target down to your existing clientele and then use that free market because you already paid for those leads. That's free revenue for you. That's free, that's free contacts at this point. You, know, you don't have to pay anything extra. So you can use our marketing content to reach out to them and say, hey, Nick, thank you so much for doing business with us before. We hope you enjoyed your experience. We are now starting up a brand new campaign that we think that you would be qualified for. Can we give you a call? Or you can even say, you can leave an open-ended question is much better. When can we give you a call to discuss the next steps? You want to gauge that interaction. So you can send that automation out and that automation will help you fuel your growth exponentially in 2022 because now you're reaching out to existing clients. You're getting that business together and you didn't spend any extra money on gathering those contacts, getting that business. So everything is a bonus for you at that point. Now, the other side of that, let's say you're not a master word, you're a single events firm. Thing you can do there is you can ask for referrals. Send, use our marketing automation to identify who's had a positive experience. So you can see who's had a positive experience in the system and you can send them automation saying, hi, thank you so much for um, doing business. I wanted to check in, see how everything is going. I hope your treatment's going well. You can identify what part of the process they're at. And you can just ask. I'd love to also say that we would love to help out anybody you know. If anybody you know needs help, you know, we feel like we've done right by you please let us know and we'll reach out to them personally. We want to not only help you, but help everybody that we can in your lives to make a difference. It helps you build the brand. It helps them build confidence. You're reaching out to them again, gives them another touch. And it gets you new business by acquiring referrals from existing clients. So it allows you to gain, um, to gain people that you wouldn't have reached with regular marketing content. Now you can reach them through asking for that referral because they might know an aunt who was just in an accident and you know that aunt hasn't reached out to an attorney yet. So now you're continuing to grow with that and you're continuing to fuel your growth with those kind of outreaches. So it's important to never forget how good of a resource existing clients are and how marketing automation can really help take the most advantage of your existing client base when it comes to marketing. So now that we've talked about 
the existing clients and we've talked about new clients. Let's talk about when existing clients become closed. Let's talk about after the case, what happens. There's a huge opportunity here. I talked a lot about Google earlier because you know, Google's in a lot of our lives. We Google a lot of different things when we're looking for new businesses. I got a haircut today. I Googled the nearest haircut or to me with the highest reviews. And I went to that one, the first person I saw. You always want to make sure that you're, that you're taking, that you're getting the best service. And we all do that right now through Google reviews or Yelp reviews. And it's because we're, we're custom tailored to that. You know, everybody has been burned by shopping on Amazon, for example, and looking at the reviews and they're like, ah, this doesn't have the good reviews, but I'll take a chance. We get it. And you're like, oh, well, this isn't what I wanted at all. So we've been conditioned to really believe reviews because we've all been burned by ignoring them in the past. So to get your reviews up and running will really help fuel your growth for the next year because people look at those and they judge your firm based on the reviews they see because that's, that's the first introduction to your firm. It's not your website. It might be an advertisement from Facebook that's brought them to it, but they'll Google you before going directly to your website or immediately after, before they call. What you can do to help increase those Google scores is you can use Law Ruler's marketing automation campaign to send out a survey as soon as that firm close, as soon as that case closes, you could send out a survey, an internal survey. And I'll go into why that's important. You can send them a questionnaire. And that questionnaire can say, how did you like your service? It could be a drop down, you know, one, two, three, four, five. How would you rate your service you received? Now, if it's a four to five star, awesome. That's what we strive for. You can send them a link to Google right in that intake. That'll take them right to your review page. Or if you use Yelp or Captera, anything you use, you can send them right to the review. Now, if the rating is one to three stars, we, we don't want those going anywhere near Google. We don't want that negative review. But we still want that feedback and we want the customer to feel valued and heard. It's extremely important that that happens. So our conditional logic through this marketing automation when they answer one to three stars, can send them extra internal questions that allows the client to get out their frustrations. Because really when they've had a bad experience and they don't care where they leave the review, they just want to know, they want somebody to know the level of experience they received and what their, what their hangups were about it. They want to feel heard, they want to feel valued. So when they get the one to three stars, you give them an avenue that's not Google, not customer facing to vent. You can say things like, oh, well, you know, one to three stars. I'm sorry to hear that. You know, I'm just going to ask you a few more questions inside the intake. And then you could say questions like, you know, what can we do to improve? What was the reason behind your one to three star rating? And then at the end of it, you can even send a follow-up email saying, thank you so much for your feedback. You know, I apologize that your experience has been so par. That is not how we aim to operate. We aim to operate with world-class customer experience every single time with every one of our clients. We are going to take your feedback and we're going to take your feedback and we're going to implement changes and work harder so that we can earn your business in the future. Because using that marketing automation is also important there because you want to make the customer feel hard. And even though they had a negative experience the first time around, this email is meant to turn that around, let them know that you've heard them. You've acknowledged their experience and you're going to do better next time. So they can still come back to you. And it gives them a chance to, it gives you a chance to reduce that churn, to have that client return to you in the future. Because all hope's not lost. So that does, that marketing automation, when clients are closed, it can not only help you increase your Google ratings and again, redu reducing the amount of negative ratings you get, but it can also help you reduce the amount of churn and increase the amount of comebacks from people that have had those negative experiences. So with that being said, we're coming to the end of what I have to share with you today. And what I'd really like to do is open the floor to questions because each one of you have had your own, your own opportunities, your own pain points when it comes to marketing automation, and you have your own goals when it comes to fueling your growth in 2022. I'd love to hear from you and open the floor. So we're going to get that started right now. Me and Nick will be answering questions, any questions you guys have. So feel free to go ahead, that should be opened right now. Feel free to go ahead and ask any questions you have. Me and Nick are available to answer anything we'd love to help you guys out. And then keep in mind that after the end of this meeting today, you will all be getting an email that will have a survey 
We appreciate everybody coming out today. We appreciate all of your time. We would love to hear your feedback on today's webinar. We also want to hear from you on what you'd like future webinars to be about. What topics would you like us to go over? What would you like us to see? We want to make these webinars important to you. We want to add value to your day. So please let us know. And we appreciate your time. All right, so the floor is open. If anybody has any questions, please feel free to put it in the question and answer box or the chat. Ginger says, thank you for your time and info. You're very welcome, Ginger. I'm happy that I could help. Hopefully some of this information has um, helped give you ideas for helping your law firm grow in 2022. All right, I'll give a few more moments for anybody to ask any questions. So Megan asks, if we have ultra high net worth clients, do you think they would use the survey? That, that's a really good question, Megan. So the, the short answer is yes. Um, so a lot of people like to feel heard. And actually, even if they're ultra high net, honestly, that means that they, they're more inclined to fill that out. And the reason they're more inclined to fill that out is because they, they really want their opinions to be heard. They're, they're very vocal normally. When you have high net worth clients, they're very expressive, they're very vocal. They will let you know exactly their experience. Those are the people that won't pull punches. And you know, nine times out of 10, the higher net they are, the, the better feedback you're gonna get. And they, they will, they might not do it right away, but they will get to it. Because I've had experiences where, you know, before Law Relay, I've worked for companies that have had you know, that have had really, really high-end clients. And, and those high-end clients, when we send out surveys. Honestly, I would say about 85 to 90% of the time they would they would actually be filled out. And it's it's that anxiety that we get of, of annoying, of potentially annoying those high net worth clients. So we don't ask those questions. But I can tell you that was never the fact with them. It was always, they were always happy to give me feedback, very eager actually. Even before sending surveys, they would always email me directly and give me the feedback. So the surveys actually give them a nice place to do it without directly emailing your staff or going to Google. So that's another good question. So how do you convert the survey to Yelp or a page where potential clients can see that? So based on our conditional logic, we can include a link on their answer. So how do you convert the survey to Yelp or a page where potential clients can see that? You send them, you send them a link to that, uh, to that spot to leave a review. So you basically say, thank you, please follow this link to continue the survey, and that'll take them to the appropriate website that you wanna target. So Rick Gordon just asked out, uh, Rick Gordon said, you know we do automations now, and they are very successful. Thank you very much, Rick. I appreciate that. You just gave me a great idea, an automated follow-up survey after we do the initial consultation. Currently sending follow-up emails and texts, but a survey after the consultation? Best with texts, emails, or both? That's a great question. How do you send the survey? What medium gets you the best response? It depends on the level of your clientele. To kind of piggyback on Megan's comment, are they high net worth clients? They might be more entitled to filling it out on the email. They're not going to be on their cell phone. If you're doing um, personal, like that's with business cases or maybe estate cases. If you're doing like personal injury, you tend to be working with more common um, clients, texts. I would say texts or both because a lot of people might not have access to their computers. The emails might get lost. So you can give them, because these surveys we can send out, this conditional logic intake that law ruler can send out, they're mobile friendly. People don't need a computer. They can be doing, going through transportation. They can be 
waiting for a bus. They can be at home watching TV. They can fill it right out on their phones. So thank you, Rick. I appreciate that question. That's a good question. All right, does anybody have any other questions to add? All right, so it looks like we're approaching the half hour mark. So I appreciate everybody's time coming out today to our webinar. We really value your interest. We value your business. If you would like to learn more, if you would like to dive deeper into our marketing automations, if you'd like to discuss how Law Ruler can help fuel your growth, or if you have any follow-up questions you didn't get the chance to answer here today, please either reach out to myself at M. D. Frain. You can see my last name here on the, on the screen with the video. If you think of the Sawshank Redemption, you'll never forget it. M. Dufresne at lawruler.com. Or you can call me directly at 561 287 0970. Or if you want to reach out to Law Ruler, generally you can also reach out to info at lawruler.com. We're always happy to take any of your questions. And thank you guys so much for coming out today. Please be on the lookout for that follow up email with the survey. We appreciate any time you can give us for filling it out. Thank you. I wish you all a happy new year and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you. Thanks, Matthew. You're welcome, Nick. It's been a pleasure doing the webinar with you.